it's the Christmas season once again, and we're talking about a very special movie here on The Captivating Christian. We're talking about Kirk Cameron's very own Saving Christmas. Cameron's Saving Christmas is one of the greatest films ever made. I say this without having even seen the film yet, but since it has Kirk Cameron in the title, and every Christian or anyone who I consider Christian must love Kirk Cameron, then it must be good. Made with a $500,000 budget, the film's box office skyrocketed to $2.5 million. Clearly, the stocks went very high on this one. Despite Cameron's name being all over the movie, the film was directed, co-written, and co-starring Darren Doan, who directed two other Kirk Cameron movies, as well as music videos for Blink-182 during the early 2000s. However, the film has been lambasted by these critics and reviewers and people who I disagree with, calling it one of the worst films ever made. The film was nominated several Golden Blueberry Awards and even landed number one worst movie ever made on the Internet Movie Database for a while, before some movie called Disaster Movie took that back. It got so bad that Kirk Cameron had to ask people on Facebook for positive reviews on the website Splatty Tomatoes, which caused more people to downvote the movie. And it seems the only people hash brown brave enough to give this movie a positive review was The Dove Company, Phil Robertson, and Ben Carson. How shameful. People are just saying that they don't like a movie, even though they haven't seen it yet. Ha. Huh. I... Uh, well... Well, you see, that's that's different because I, uh, yeah, uh, well, let's just talk about the movie. This is Kirk Cameron saving Christmas. I love Christmas. I admit it. I love everything about Christmas time. I love the cookies. I love the fire. I, I love the presents. I love the stockings. I love the tree. I love the fudge. I love the lights. I, it's a great time for growing out the winter beard. I love everything about it. And I love hot chocolate. Well, I don't know about you, audience, but I certainly agree with what he's saying. I... Ariel, why do you always have to do this to me? Why do you always have to belittle me in front of my audience? But have you noticed, there's some people who would love to put a big wet blanket on all of this. They don't want us to love Christmas so much and celebrate it the way we do. And yet, those same people are the same kind of people that try to force their beliefs onto us. Pfft, don't they know it's only okay when we do it? So Kirk describes three different groups of people around Christmas time. Those who unconditionally love Christmas no matter what it's about, those who participate on the war on Christmas trying to take the Christ out of it, and those who hate Christmas for being over-commercialized. All of this will become important throughout the course of the film. After an animated credit sequence, the film proper begins at a Christmas party being held at the house of Kirk's sister. Hey now, that's not Candace Cameron. Oh, what, are you telling me that she was too busy being in a Hallmark movie to be in this masterpiece? As well as her husband, played by Doan, named Christian White. Hey, Ariel. Anyway, Christian is the type of man who hates Christmas because people care less about the birth of the Savior and more about presents and decorations. But no time for that. Time for the sassy black quasi-gay character of the film, DeAndre. Blessed and highly favored. And? Saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that would have burned in fire. And? Made evident by speaking in tongues. Of course. <laughs> no more crazy shirt Fridays. Well, we're gonna go to HR. I'm gonna take it straight to HR. You gotta read your emails. If we don't have Crazy Shirt Fridays, it's the end for us. Man, that's all we got. What else do we get? We're gonna keep it that way. We're gonna march if we have to. Straight power. Me and you. My people have been through enough. He truly is the Tyler Perry of this movie. Sick of the party, Christian makes his way to his car, as Kirk follows after him and they discuss the holidays. Get ready for this location, because most of the film will take place in this car. All right, who wants hot chocolate? What are we gonna do? We're gonna, we're gonna open those presents, the nieces and nephews get all excited. Oh, they're gonna tear through. Joy, 
All right, and it's, like, and it's like three weeks from now, no one's gonna be playing with it. And that money spent, how many kids could we have fed? How many wells could we have dug? I hear you. I get it. My man. But this is all wrong. This is all wrong. No. You're all wrong. Kirk then launches into an explanation involving Jesus' birth and his death, and how in both cases he was given a swaddling cloth at birth and a burial cloth at death. Meanwhile, we cut back to inside the party, and DeAndre begins talking with this guy who lays into his theories about the war on Christmas. They're already taking away our freedom of speech. I can't say Merry Christmas at work no more. I have to say Happy Holidays, but I am not in the days. I am wide awake. I saw loose change. I know what's up with the whole Koch brothers, Halliburton, Dick Cheney, Enron, Fannie Mac, Freddie Mae tie-in, but I mean, that's obvious. Look, man, I saw it on Fox News, so you know it's true. War on Christmas, it's everywhere. Ha! Finally! A character us Defenders of Christmas can finally get behind! Ha <laughs> ha! Uh... What? Are you trying to say that... that Christians like this are also found annoying by other Christians? Just as much as the people who constantly force others to say Happy Holidays? But I thought Kirk Cameron would be all for that. He was on Fox News! and preached about the crocoduck. What? What about Area 52? That's where they're keeping all the mangers and trees and nativity scenes they keep taking down. After that, Christian then goes on about how some Christmas traditions are tied back to pagan traditions, like the winter solstice. Think that's bad? Look at a truly satanic holiday like Halloween. Pfft, that's nothing but paganism for you right there. It's December. Jesus was not born in December, and we're celebrating his birthday in December. Hello? When was he born? Oh, you're, uh, you're one of those, huh? And so, Kirk then launches into a fable about how the Christmas tree was actually rooted in the Bible since Jesus was hung on a cross, which is made of wood, and wood comes from trees. It's similar to how we decorate the Christmas tree at Christmas time. So when you walk into a Christmas tree lot, I want you to see hundreds of crosses. Always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the right side of life. And the early church had plenty of good reasons to celebrate the birth of Jesus on December 25th, and it had nothing to do with the winter solstice. By the way, last I checked, it was God who made the winter solstice. Aha! Checkmate, atheists! And finally, the two have a discussion about Santa Claus, with Christian saying, why are we putting so much time on the jolly fat man made to promote Coca-Cola and not the birth of our savior? I'm so excited to get my picture taken with Santa Claus! Oh, you can make me presents! S-A-N-T-A. Rearrange the letters. Satan. Santa, Satan, same letters. Right? Right. Wait a tick, why does that sound so familiar? Who would help grown men heal the focus from the baby Jesus on his birthday? Who could it be? I just don't know. Could it be Satan? Oh yeah. Wait, was that from SNL? How did I recognize that? I don't watch SNL. The real Santa Claus was a real bad, bad dude. And when I say bad, I mean bad in the good way. Right, okay, yes, what? And then we get into the final fable, which depicts the original Saint Nicholas, and how he went after a man named Arius, who questioned Jesus' role as the Son of God. And so because of this, Nicholas went and smite the man with his cane. Now, of course, not everyone at the council was happy with his less-than-jolly actions. In fact, they were so displeased, they removed his title as bishop but he was so loved by the people that they gave it back to him. In fact, he was even sainted. That's why we call him Saint Nicholas. Now, in my personal opinion, if you want a better version of this story in a much shorter rendition, I highly recommend checking out the VeggieTales episode, Saint Nicholas, a story of joyous giving. Thank you very much.
So now it seems that Christian is ready to go back into the party, as he slides on his belly and crashes into the presence, where Kirk then compares the stack of presents to the city of Jerusalem. Okay, that, that's a stretch. I, I'm all for presents, but that, that, is, that is a reach. And now it's time for a breakdown. And by that I mean an ending dance number set to some hip hop. Clearly, not every song and dance number to end out a movie can be Jonah was a prophet or rock monster. And don't buy into the complaint about materialism during Christmas. W wait a second, what? Pull out your best dishes, your finest linens, your nicest silverware, the biggest ham. Every side dish you can possibly imagine and the richest butter. This is a celebration of the eternal God taking on a material body. So it's right that our holiday is marked with material things. But the Bible says that greed and materialism and, and gluttony and overindulgence is bad. And yet this movie is saying that those are good things. And Kirk Cameron is a Christian, so Clearly, all Christians must love this movie, unironically. And we, as Christians, all have to agree on the same things, except when we don't, and we have to disagree with Christians that we disagree with, because we... I... I oh. And you're blocked. Blocked. Oh, um... Hey, hey, Chris, what, uh, what are you doing? I just watched Kirk Cameron saving Christmas. Let me guess, you just absolutely loved it because it had a Christian actor like Kirk Cameron and it fed into your war on Christmas bullshit, right? Get out of here with that. What were you doing earlier today? Protesting a Chick-fil-A? No, oh, no, I, I did that yesterday. Besides, you're one to talk. You're probably out protesting Starbucks because they don't write Merry Christmas on their cups. No, no, I did that last week. Hello there. We've been watching your content, and we respect that you take a bold stand in your beliefs, no matter how controversial. We have sent this email out to various online social media influencers and content creators who believe in spreading the word and making a change through their content. Joining with this program means that you will be able to express your views to a wider audience of people than you are probably used to. Sincerely, Megacorp. Megacorp? Megacorp? What the heck is Megacorp? Little, uh, little Hollywood magic right here. This phone right here that I was reading the email off of. There's nothing on it. It's not even on right now. Ho <laughs> ho!